LHC is being fired up and is expected to begin generating particle collisions any day now. Are they going to achieve their goal? If so, it looks to us like they will be fulfilling prophecy on the exact schedule foretold in the Bible, a schedule and outcome they themselves are signaling. CERN recently presented two films to celebrate the refiring of the LHC called Symmetry and Symmetry Unraveled. A time code has been embedded in the Symmetry trailer that testifies to the reason for the LHC. There's a ringing sound and a particle beam collision at 1 minute 13 seconds that speaks to me of the 13th day of the first month on the Lord's calendar. That's the day when biblical models illustrate the emergence of the Antichrist beast and that's when the LHC is probably going to begin colliding protons at high energy. In the trailer, subsequent to that ringing collision, we see beings that had been trapped in another dimension emerge through a time-space portal. We'll soon see if it's coincidental that their production mirrors the biblical prophecy. It seems very unlikely. I've been blogging about how control over time itself is going to be wielded for a week or so by the ancient dragon. And that's what the trailer seems to demonstrate in the way the entire Passover season is embedded in the time code. With even an accounting of the preparation for Passover that accounts for a preliminary hoax scenario. I'm also going to be comparing the key scene of this trailer to one from another film, The Penitent Man, to demonstrate the match. Just because we're not being told directly what's really going on doesn't mean we're not being told. This is a big deal because your life will never be the same. The world will never be the same. And what you do about it will matter for a very long time. The sequence of scenes I showed from the trailer presents a looping in time, repeating the opening of the Stargate to illustrate it from various perspectives. The brief segment shown begins with the dance in the magic circle of salt, which is itself a manifestation of theurgy, and what's dramatized is representative of multiplied thousands of ritual sacrifices and evocation rituals over many centuries. Then there's a particle collision with scattered particles as would be recorded in one experiment sensor array. Then circular collision imagery from what looks like another array's perspective. And then we see trapped entities and their emergence as splintering. Symmetry achieved as the underworld has been bridged to this realm. Control over the flow of time-space has been established for a limited season. I'm going to compare a key scene from the Symmetry trailer with one from The Penitent Man now, a movie about time travel that I blogged about at length last year. What you're going to see in this demonstration is how a glass of water is used to illustrate a particle collision. A man bangs with his fist to cause the wave rings to appear. A little later, I'll play it in context and you'll hear the man tell us that the water represents time and that the ripples are ripples in time. He's been explaining about how to open a time-space portal for travel through time. Here it is again. His fist pounding represents the percussion of a particle beam collision in CERN's LHC. The penitent man doesn't tell us that directly or that the time machine being discussed is the LHC, but they dance all over it with the expressive language of visual symbols and neuro-linguistic programming, the subtle dropping of verbal hints. What CERN is cleverly not telling us in their opera and dance film trailer is what they are dancing all over with occult symbolism and NLP. They're opening the door to let someone in with the breaching of time-space domains. The LHC is a machine that's intended to open a wormhole through time-space so Apollo can emerge and that's what the Symmetry trailer confirms to us. In familiar occult fashion it conceals and reveals that it will happen through the pairing of science and magic. CERN is all about facilitating and celebrating the arrival of the Antichrist beast. Spare no expense. There's no attempt by CERN to hide the connection between the particle collider and Shiva, the Lord of the Dance. It's a form of the dance of the Nataraja that is performed by the dancers in symmetry. A large idol of the Lord of the Dance is displayed prominently at the facility. Shiva is the destroyer of worlds. 
In Revelation 9, the angel with the key to the abyss is Apollyon, the destroyer, Abaddon. The pedestal of the idol at CERN is a lotus, which is understood by a lumined occultist to represent the emergence of Horus, who was also known as Apollo or Shiva. The facility is actually located right where Apollo was openly worshipped long ago in the town of Apollyakum. I already decoded the fundamentals of the symmetry trailer in this post to the Open Scroll blog titled CERN's Lord of the Dance, so you can reference that for more info, especially about the cosmology of Shiva. The opera and dance production is titled Symmetry, and that involves a matching of the atomic physics with the ritual magic of theurgy. The symmetry describes the exploitation of physical laws to manipulate the spiritual realm. The hermetic maxim is an expression of this symmetry, as above, so below. Those who are being inspired by Apollo to bring him forth are synchronizing every kind of work to resonate and harmonize with a focus on the boundary of time-space until the desired result is attained. Symmetry, the bridging of time-space, control over time-space domains. I want to make an observation before playing the clip from the penitent man. The CERN LHC facility is literally a temple devoted to the ancient gods and it's a set for much of the symmetry film. It's located adjacent to what's claimed to be the number one most occult city in the world, Geneva, Switzerland. The penitent man was filmed adjacent to the number two most occult city in the world, which is Vancouver, BC. It was filmed in Seattle, and most of the scenes were shot inside a Masonic facility, the Society of the Illuminated Brotherhood known for their temples. In this clip from the Penitent Man, you're about to see the context of the cryptic demonstration of a particle beam collision. The younger man is pressing the older man, Mr. Darnell, for technical detail about how he traveled there from the future. You'll hear Mr. Darnell say, you need a machine to sustain a wormhole, of course. What kind of machine do you suppose they're talking about? Uh, listen closely to their conversation and pay attention to all the props on the set. But I did it. I actually did it, Doctor. See, viewing was only the beginning. But like a rudimentary computer, it only took time and development before a new model was born. You harness a wormhole, speed up one end, and slow down the other end. Go on, go on. I can't. Mr. Darnell, you realize... Please, please, I can't. Let's leave it at this. How does it work? How does it work? You have to understand, if I answer that question, you could rip a hole through everything as we know it. But that's why you're here, isn't it? To change the past, so you're gonna have to give me something. Dr. Pine, I was under the impression it was never a good idea to force a patient to divulge anything they weren't comfortable with. I can't, no, I'm, I, I can't keep doing this. All right, all right. I know this must be frustrating. I can't give you everything. It just wouldn't be safe. I'm listening. You say you like science? I do. To go back and read the concepts presented by Hawking, Einstein, Lewis, light speed, black holes, wormholes. They were so close. There was just one small piece missing. I'm sure you're aware or somewhat familiar with the concept of wormholes. Sure, yeah, they're fascinating to wonder about. If you don't mind, could you tell me what you know? Um, they're a consequence of Einstein's theory of general relativity. A wormhole, in theory, would act as a shortcut or a passageway through space and time. The physics are even simpler than your definition. A wormhole creates a tunnel, effectively cutting through two locations in space-time. Yeah, yeah, therefore eliminating the need for three-dimensional travel through space. No more rocket ships. I like Stargate, too. Oh, wow, Stargate. It's been a long time since I've seen that movie. Who is that guy? Uh, he's really good in that old western. Kurt Russell? Kurt Russell, he was good, wasn't he? 
Listen, nothing you are telling me is new information, right? The theories about wormholes have existed for a long time, but nobody knows if they actually exist or how to find them. But I do. They're everywhere. Just a matter of seeing them or harnessing them. But you haven't explained either. How do you see them? How do you harness them? A machine, some sort of gateway? Of course you need a machine to sustain a wormhole. But this is where I stop. I have given you the gun. Let me keep the bullets. Please continue. I found a way to go back. I was alone, but I found it. My old partner was the only one that knew, but for now, it'll stay that way. The only question is, can the ripples I create be enough to change the future? Or create an alternate one? Ripples? Think of the water in that glass as time. Time moves forward constantly, untouched, it's as still as the water. Go back and try to change something, and it creates a ripple effect. Change has to catch up with time. changes or suffers if you've ever been exposed to soap operas the music in the soundtrack should evoke memories of a long-running show like sands through the hourglass so are the days of our lives like sands through the hourglass so are the days of our lives that's the kind of subtlety being leveraged by the filmmaker. Darnell, the time traveler and inventor of time travel who destroyed the future, says, Think of the water in that glass as time. Time moves forward constantly. Untouched, it's as still as the water. Go back and try to change something. Bang. And it creates a ripple effect. Read between the lines. The particle collision pictured creates a ripple effect in time a time impact event. Who is trying to go back or forward to try to change an outcome? Darnell is. That's why he's there meeting with Dr. Pyatt and speaking so persuasively. Darnell himself is playing the role of the destroyer of worlds, the dancing Lord Shiva. Under the lamp we see an idol of Shiva doing the cosmic dance of destruction, a miniature of the one featured at the CERN facility. There's a horned mask on the wall that represents the horned god Cernunos, the god of the abyss, who is continually being invoked in ceremonies where magic circles are cast with salt, just like in the symmetry film. Yes, Cernunos, C-E-R-N-U-N-N-O-S. Also, Nodens, Abaddon, Apollyon the Destroyer. It's a clever set. The table lamp paints light on the wall in the shape of an hourglass, hinting of a measure of the sands of time. Under the lamp, you'll find a pitcher of water, a reservoir as drawn from the river of time. Mr. Darnell's pocket watch rests on the coffee table with his time water glass, with the hinged case being a model of folded time space. The box of tissues on the table is a cube. Think of the cube in the Marvel Comic Universe which has to do with the multi-dimensional binding and the control of vast time-space energies. Again, what kind of machine are they talking about in the clip? Did you see the picture on the wall that artfully illustrates the particle collisions? Darnell mentioned small pieces, like subatomic particles. He mentioned a gun and bullets, and the collider fires protons like bullets from a machine gun. Did you notice the picture of the full moon? next to the one of the particle collisions? That's a celestial timekeeper, the one that rules the night according to the foundational cosmological text of Genesis chapter 1. It's appointed for signs and for seasons and for days and years, and to give light on the earth, which is a matter of the revelation of supernatural insight and the Hebrew Moedim, the prophetic schedule of holy days. The moon silently affects the tides of the seas on earth in endless cycles. With that influence due to the interaction of gravity relative to mass 
and with the water and the sea as a metaphor for time, that's a potent symbol in the context of the particle collider, with its vast array of enormously powerful ring magnets arrayed in a giant ring. Sonic energy is also used to accelerate the particles, so the LHC literally sings as the particles dance. Symmetry's opera and dance. When Darnell bangs the coffee table and we see the imagery of the particle beam collision so clearly illustrated, is there any doubt about what time machine they're talking about? With all the clues, do they really need to say it? Need more evidence? Darnell doesn't actually hit the coffee table with his fist, not directly. He hits a book that sits on the table, which is wrapped around with two rubber bands, one red and one green. The red band represents a stream of particles traveling around the LHC, and the green band is the opposing stream. The crossing of the bands represents the crossing of the streams where the collisions occur. He strikes the rubber bands at their crossing. Bang! What's in Darnell's little black book? Notes on particle physics, time-space manipulation, and time travel? Are the bands made of rubber because time is flexible and in flux, able to contract and expand? Is there a redshift of the beams relative to one another, where he's slowing down one and speeding up the other, which Darnell had already claimed was a general principle involved with harnessing a wormhole? There's another aspect of the rubber band bound book that should be mentioned. The two men are actually the same man who traveled back in time on a mission to convince himself not to make the mistake of building the device that would destroy the world in 50 years time. The rubber bands represent the life of the man, where there are two at once at the crossing of the future with the past in the present. The black book would represent a kind of journal or book of life. I'm going to replay the key collision segment from the Symmetry promo. Again, pay attention to the time marker. Based upon years of study, we should expect the Antichrist beast to manifest on the 13th day of the first month on the Lord's calendar. By the 21st day of the month, the season of primary impact is expected to end. The control of time is going to be granted to the adversary for a season called Megaslipsis in the Greek, Great Tribulation. Things should get real interesting, perhaps a day in advance. Bye. <laughs>